Just About Sailing, March 2020. Right, this one is going to be a three-parter. The second part is going to follow fairly soon because I've done most of the videoing, I just need to edit it together. And this is going to be all about me attempting to make a water tank out of this stuff. This is 8mm thick HDPE, high density polyethylene I think it is, using one of these heat gun things uh, which you use with these welding plastic rods. So we'll, we'll get into that. You might say, yeah, but I thought you had a water tank. I did, I've got this one. And if you look back to my August 2018 when I got it and I sort of cut some bits so it fits under the, um, the bunk, the problem is, and I'll show a bit of video, it doesn't quite fit. The, these fittings were, were sticking up a little bit too high. So my answer was temporarily to just fill through this red cap and have to take all the bunks and things off. But that, that was a bit of faff. People did suggest, and it's probably not a bad idea, that I put this in the side rather than the top. And if me doing this bespoke thing fails, that's what I will do. So anyway, we'll get into that in a second. <coughs> But first of all, a bit of actual sailing on this channel. My daughter, Lucy, <sighs> took her competent crew. Now, I don't know if you remember earlier in this year, but the UK was hit with two very big storms. One weekend it was Storm Kiara or Kira, followed by Storm Dennis. And that's exactly that period between the two. That's exactly when she did her five days of um, competent crew. Now, if you remember way back, I'm going to show a little bit of clip of Lucy on what she thought at that time were rough seas and really wasn't. It was, you know, you, the waves were barely that big. So how do you like it a bit choppier? I do not. You do not what? I do not like it. Like, you don't not like what? I do not like it choppy. <laughs> So how was she going to cope in force 8, not uh, 35 gusting much higher knots of wind for the whole time where I think they only took the storm jib off twice. She did manage to take a little bit of um, video so let's have a quick, quick look at this, at the conditions. Actually, she loved it. She really enjoyed it. And I think that's given her a huge amount of confidence. So, so anyway, let's get on and uh, do this. And because I haven't done this before, this video is pretty much going to be about the testing and the theory of how things work. The next video is going to be mocking it up and getting to the stage of doing a leak test. And the third video, which I haven't done at all yet, will be about finishing it off. So luckily, my boat is called Serenity. By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul, my boat is Serenity. This is not a serious channel. I do have plans for Serenity, so there's two options. Either do a cardboard mock-up or take the plans and work from there. So which one did I choose to do? Let's have a quick look at the plans. So here we go. Here's the, um, the official plan of Serenity. And I'm showing you this for two reasons. First of all, um, to say that this is not a DIY channel, although I am doing DIY. Don't copy what I do. You do it at your own risk. If you know better, please do leave a comment. And if you are looking to do something like this, then do read the comments because there are lots of people who watch this channel who know a lot better than me. So, and the other thing is, this is not a serious channel. This is the water tank. So you can see it's an odd sort of shape. So although I could work it out from here, I think the best thing to do is to make a cardboard mock-up of it. Right, I don't know if you remember this far back, but I, um, I want to put in a, a new water tank and I cut this piece out the middle, which I'm going to have to re-fiberglass back in. Found a tank that seems to just about fit. And originally I was doing some cardboard templates um, to see if I could get something a bit bespoke because this is a strange shape. <laughs> 
Will it come out? Right. Yeah, this is this is obviously a, a slopey shape, so a sort of a no advertising, but a Toblerone bar shaped tank would kind of be better. And it's very you can get them made up, and I thought that's this is a little that's a bit expensive to do that. Um can I how about making one um out of plastic and welding it together? So that's what I'm gonna have a look at and see if I can do it. And the first step, obviously is to Maz calls it computer, no, cardboard aided design. So the first thing, and I totally agree with this, I'm gonna try and make a tank out of cardboard. Right, so the first thing you need is a full length mirror. Throw the mirror away and keep the cardboard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that this bit is the kind of upright element as it goes in here and obviously I need to make sure that it's as big as possible but no bigger so actually that's not a bad fit so uh, to get the end piece I've got another piece of cardboard which is again about the right width I'm going to put that in there let's change camera <coughs> And I want to just copy roughly the shape of the, well I want to copy as exactly as I can the shape of the hull. So you know how to do this. You start at the furthest away bit. Keep these two lines roughly vertical. And simply draw a line. By the way, don't worry, I am not using my best felt pens for this. Won't be curved, but this is just um, easier than measuring it. So yeah, so that fits in there nicely. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do now, having carefully made that curve, is I'm actually going to make it straight. And cut this bit off. All will become clear. Because yeah, I'm it's I'm sure an expert could could make a curved tank, but it's going to be a lot easier for me. And I I don't even know if this can be possible, but do you know what? It's going to be fun, and it's going to be worth a try. So that is the shape of that end. Don't know quite how tall that's going to be yet. Because last time I don't know if you remember. But when I actually got the other tank in, I didn't leave enough room here. Um, <laughs> I didn't leave enough room to put the, the fittings in. I haven't got the fittings and so on sorted out. But the first thing I'm going to do is to make the bottom and the sides, and then I can decide how tall it's going to be. Hopefully that makes sense. Right, let's move on to the next step. Right, so I now have... It's really going to be difficult to show this one end of the tank. Let's actually, let's put it in too. Let's, that, that will be clearer, won't it? So this will fit down into that hole pretty much perfectly. And I'm just going to trim this off. What the sides will be, because yeah. obviously this is a fairly strange shape anyway. And every single surface. I think the bottom bit is the only bit which will actually be a sort of a rectangle. But um, this is the easy bit. Right, I am hugely looking forward to this. I've got a massive great piece of <coughs> HDPE, high density polyethylene, which is basically cutting board. Um, just over half, it's about half a metre by one and a half metres by eight millimeters. So what I'm going to do, because I've never done this before, is to do a test first. So I'm going to cut this using the circular saw, which apparently is better for doing these. I've done this sort of thing with the jigsaw before and I did the windows. I cut out a little template and it kind of fuses it behind you as you're cutting. 
and apparently these things are better but let's um let's give it a go and see what happens right this is very white so i'm not sure how this comes out but this is very heath robinson the way that i've kind of clamped this up and as you can see there is a bit of a gap which i shall adjust what i've done is i've taken the worst two edges either the two sawn edges i've butted this up i've i didn't have a router that would actually put a slight 45 degree be bevel on here so i've um i've used a file instead so this is probably the worst case scenario and I think the idea is to kind of tack this together on the inside a little bit first and then once it's stabilised a bit you can do the rest. But again it's that question of theory versus practice isn't it and I have never done this before so let's see how this goes. So this is the device. Interestingly, it, I mean it comes with one of these attachments to, to feed the HDPE rod through but I haven't got the, the little device, which is a bit like a soldering iron attachment, to tack it. So I'm going to try something I think is called a pendulum wave straight away. I'm going to switch this on. It will, it, it, there's a fan noise with it, but... <laughs> so, worst of all, if I can make this work, I can make anything work. So taking the clamps off, and yeah, that, that looks fairly solid. Um, I've taken the clamps off because I obviously want to finish it off and do the ends. Oh. And then smarten that up and perhaps try the other technique on the other side. Right, let's try the other technique where I feed this through as the air's blown at it. And you can see there's quite a nice sort of, well, no, this is not really, it's not, and bits of squeeze through. So I really do need the tacking thing because I tried to do the little bits at the end after I've undone it and it kind of squishes them apart. But anyway, let's switch this noisy thing back on again. strong but it's not brilliant and that looks really tatty doesn't it so I think a bit more practice is required to hone the skills and I'm not sure how good the, um, the melt was yeah not very good not very good is the answer because look I managed to just sort of snap that in two without much effort so okay that was experience. I shall do a bit more research, have a little look. It's kind of not melted on as much as I wanted, so maybe the heat needs to be a bit higher. Um, yeah, let's see. I'm gonna, gonna give this some thought and then have another go. Right, so this is <coughs> what I had. Imagine this is the HDPE. Here, and I kind of butted the two sharp edges together um, and then I tried to sort of do a a bead in here and then one in here and then sort of fill this this out and it really didn't work very well because it didn't have a very good area to start off with what I've decided to do is to actually cut a 45 degree chamfer on it and now not everything is at sort of right angle so it won't work for, for everything and the first thing to do is to actually do a tack weld I've, got, I've now got the tack welding attachment which kind of sticks it together and will seal the gap um, 
then, and I don't, don't think it matters what order, I'm going to do a pendulum weld here, kind of get this sealed up, so that should melt through this. This is eight millimeters, by the way, so we're only talking four millimeters there. So, and then what I'm going to do is to do a further pendulum weld here on the inside and another I don't know what you call it where you sort of feed it through that nozzle thing on the outside and then when I finish it all look at all these different colors I've got when I finish it all I will try and neaten it up by just sort of making it a little bit round there I don't think I really need to do anything on the inside and in theory that should give me a strong join So right, I've got a tack welder which didn't come with the original kit, so this is literally just a, a blade. And interestingly, although I had one of these, that one, it came with another one that's got a bit of an angle on it. So that might actually be useful for getting into those awkward corners. Right, so a bit of a bit of a wrap up. Let's have a quick look at this. Um, that turned out quite nicely. I've tried to. I've sort of shaved it down a little bit with. Um, a knife and some sandpaper. I think what I need to get, because it seems to slice better than anything else, than those little hand, uh, what are they called? Planes? Hand plane? Uh, the inside, that didn't work well at all. In fact, a bit of it, a bit of it, I even managed to sort of peel straight off afterwards. So I'm going to use that pendulum method on the inside. Um, I think the temperature is still a bit hot. I'm going to try some more experiments, probably off camera. Is it strong enough? Uh, I'm not the heaviest person in the world, but can I sit on it? Ooh. Yeah, that's whoa. That's all my that's all my weight. I'm just whoa. I'm just on my tiptoes there. So. Gosh, I nearly, nearly trapped my fingers. <laughs> so yeah, very pleased with that. That is definitely strong enough. Doing all the things I did, mitering that ever so slightly, perhaps deoxidizing it. I need to adjust the temperature, going a bit more slowly, probably getting just a bit of a better feel for it. Uh, yeah, very happy with that. Yeah. So, a cup of tea is waiting for me now. So, sorry, I shall see you later.